Hey everybody! Today on Bella Renovare, we are going to be doing another IKEA makeover. I am super excited to show you. This is going to be super awesome. You're not even going to recognize this piece when you're done. So stay tuned if you guys want to see me make over this little chest of drawers from IKEA. So this week I'm actually collaborating with one of my favorite artists here on YouTube. Her name is Katie Scott. If you guys are not following her, her YouTube channel is right here. So her name is Katie Scott and it's salvaged by Kay Scott. She does a lot of really awesome makeovers. So she did one a while back and I'm actually going to follow her tutorial and it is a very similar piece to this. It's an Ikea piece of furniture that she had gotten off the side of the road. And we're actually going to be doing some rattan caning, cane webbing. Um, some people call it cane webbing. Some people call it rattan. So that is what it is. It's rattan cane webbing that we're going to be using. And so we're going to be using a few power tools in this video. Nothing crazy. Anything is, it's super easy. Even a beginner can do it. So I'm going to show you guys how she did this makeover. If you guys are not following her, again, make sure that you are following her here. And then also I'm going to link her video that I'm following right here. And as always guys, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos every week that I put out. Again, I'm super excited about this collaboration. Katie is awesome, and if you guys are not following her, you need to. If you're already following her, you already know that she's awesome. So she takes a lot of pieces, and she makes them completely different. So that's what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna be making this completely different. Again, as always, we need to prep our piece, so let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I wanna to explain to you a little bit about this piece. It is Ikea, and if you guys didn't see my video last week, I did an Ikea piece. A lot of Ikea furniture is solid wood, but it's pine. Same with this. So this is pine. The body of it is totally pine. The only thing that is not solid wood is the very back and then the bottom of the drawer. So they do put a little bit of a finish on here. I don't know if you guys can see. You can kind of see that there is a sheen right here. So there is some kind of lacquer or poly on here. And so we wanna make sure that I clean this really well. So I'm gonna clean this really, really well first before I start anything. And I've got my rattan cane webbing. I don't really know, what do you guys prefer to say? Cane webbing, that is usually, for me when I see cane webbing, it's something that I see on a chair because I've had to redo caning on chairs before um, but it's made of rattan so some of it's made from rattan which is a plant it's a tree and so I've got it here we're gonna pull this out so I've got my webbing here we're gonna pull this out got it off Amazon Deutsch because if you guys don't know I live in Germany so I'm gonna pull this out and I told you I got it this is in German okay so I'm gonna have to translate this but you guys listen this is a perk of living in germany this company sent me some haribo gummies so i'll be eating these while i'm doing this but the cane webbing i didn't need a ton i'm going to end up cutting the center let me pull that off i'm going to end up cutting the center of this drawer and this drawer right here as well so katie when she did hers she only did the top i'm gonna do both just because I really, I actually really like the look of this webbing. And so I've got enough here that I can cut the center and I can do one drawer here and one drawer here. So of course, you know, when we do collaborations and we follow people's tutorials, if you guys follow my tutorials, it's very, it's more for inspiration to learn a few things, learn to soak that if I didn't know that before. Um, so, you know, I'm going to not be, I'm not gonna be using the same colors that Katie used. I'll probably be using I'm thinking probably a deep blue. I've got to think about it for a second. So I'm kind of working as I go on this, but I will be doing the same technique that she did as far as cutting out the drawers. Again, if you guys see her video, she does have, I think there's like a little cut right here on her drawer instead of these two. Hold on guys. I know I said we are going to be using some cane webbing, but you need to stay tuned till the end because I made a huge boo-boo and you'll see why in maybe the thumbnail, there's not cane webbing. Okay, so 
let's just keep moving on. Here's my before. This is an Ikea piece. Honestly, I don't know how old it is. I got it from my friend who I think probably got it from the garbage. So what I did is I took the drawers out first. I used my plastic square to mark all the places. So for this particular one, I did two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom, and then two inches from the side. Now, remember that I did these measurements before measuring my cane. So make sure that you, whatever material you have, you don't make the cuts too big, but this is something that you'd wanna do because you wanna make sure that your lines are straight and that you have the right measurements. As you can see, my square is broken, but it still works. Once you're done marking all your measurements, it's kind of a game of connecting the dots almost. So you see I did that line. You wanna make sure that you are using a square or something that is square to mark your lines. That way everything is nice and even. At this point, what I did is I took my square and I made tick marks at all of the two inch markings. So whatever marking you decide on your piece, I did two inches all the way down the center because my square is a little bit smaller. I do have a large T square, but not everybody has one of those. So I'm trying to use tools that are cheap and expensive that everyone has, or it doesn't take a lot to go and buy them. So what I'm doing is I'm making tick marks for the two inches all the way down. So that way I have all these dots that we can connect together. Right here, I'm taking a piece of wood and I'm going to connect all the dots. And what I mean is I'm going to line up the edge of this wood with the markings that I already had, and I'm gonna make them all even with those little two inch marks. And then I'm going to use my pencil and make a long line with it. Now you wanna make sure that this piece of wood is nice and straight because not every piece of wood is, and that will be a problem for you later. So you can always use this piece of wood, make sure you line everything up. If you need to clamp it down, you can but this is to get that longer line. That way we know what to follow with our jigsaw. Once you have everything marked off with your pencil, you're going to get your drill out and I am going to drill the inside of the corners of each corner. So I made little circles just so I, I don't, I do that so that I can physically see them or visually see them. And so I'm going to drill a hole in each of those corners inside of the marks and that way I'll be able to put my jigsaw blade into that and that will help me start the cut. So right here, you can see that those holes are in the inside of each corner. And now what I'm gonna do is take my jigsaw, I'm going to put my blade in there, and I'm gonna make sure I'm holding firm on my jigsaw, and that way I can make a nice, clean cut. You want to get this as straight as humanly possible. Later on, I'm gonna take my sandpaper and I'm going to sand it to smooth it out even more. But you want to make sure that you are not going past those marks. You want to really stay on the lines. Working with a jigsaw is not a hard task, but you want to make sure that you are going slow and you're controlling it. You want to make sure that you take your finger off of the trigger before you pull it out because you don't want it to go crazy and make any cuts. So you want to go nice and slow and controlled. And then once you get to the end, you want to take your finger off the trigger and don't pull it out until it stops moving. You also wanna make sure that you're keeping it flat against the surface. You don't wanna be lifting it up and moving it around. Just allow it to glide across your surface and that way you get the best cut possible.
This next cut, you can see that there's just a little tiny bit that I need to get off. So I put the blade back in the pre-existing line and I went ahead and just carefully butted it up against that corner. I did the cuts on both of the drawers. And so now what I'm going to do, I wanna smooth this out. I don't wanna have rough edges. I don't wanna have uneven edges. So I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to first take my surf prep sander and I'm going to sand the inside with an 80 grit, kind of even everything out, smooth it, smooth the corners, which you'll see here in a second that I actually butt up against each corner of the 90 degrees so that I can smooth it out and just make it look much more professional. Once I'm done doing all of that and I'm smoothing it out and I'm happy with it, I go ahead with my fine sanding pad and I go over everything so that I can really smooth it out and make it look nice. Also, when the wood is smoother, the paint goes on a little bit better. So I wanna make sure it's smooth, nice, professional, So we need to talk about the bottom of this piece. I don't know what's going on. I feel like it looks unfinished. So we're going to build the shelf. The first thing that I'm going to do is measure that board that's already there. That was already there, just one little board. I'm gonna measure it. And then what I'm gonna do, I, I always write down the measurement just so I don't forget, but I'm gonna take these pine boards that I got from the hardware store and I'm going to measure them. So there's a little saying in woodworking, it's measure twice, cut once or measure three times and cut once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure these boards out to the 30 inches that it was. And then I'm gonna take my square and I'm gonna make lines. That way that line is absolutely 100% straight. Normally to cut these boards, I would be using a miter saw, which I do have, but I don't want to assume that everybody has a miter saw. We've already got a jigsaw, so we're just gonna use the jigsaw for this. What I'm doing is I'm clamping it down to my desk. I'm just using that as the work area or my chest of drawers. And I'm taking my jigsaw and I'm gonna do a cut as straight as I possibly can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to fit the board to see if it fits. And this one is like a glove. It fits so good. So I'm going to cut all the rest of my boards. I needed four boards to fill this space to make a shelf. I'm gonna screw each end of the board from the outside. And so I wanna make sure that it's even with the pre-existing screw that's already there. So again, I'm taking my square and I'm going to mark where I need to go. And then I'll know exactly where I need to drill. I'm gonna be completely honest and transparent with you. Craig jig screws, drill bits, all that stuff is my favorite things to use for woodworking. So this drill bit, as you can see, has a point on it. And what it does is it does a countersink on it. So you'll see here in a second, once you get it in, it makes almost like a pocket, okay? They call them pocket screws. Like po you, you do pockets for woodworking and that way you can hide these screws. And so this, I actually ended up screwing on a knot, so this is taking me a little bit longer. But as you can see, you can keep on going in to this piece and it'll hide the head of the screw and that way I can put some wood filler in there. But what happens is, is once you get to the other side, you're gonna see a little tiny mark with that, that point, point that comes out and that's when you wanna stop. So you wanna go in there gradually. You see that little point right there? You need to stop at that point, otherwise you're going to screw the hole straight through. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my Craig screws and I'm drilling them into my pine boards and that way they are in place. Pine actually splinters and cracks easily. And so with Craig jig screws, those are my favorite because they don't 
split pine as easily as some of the other wood screws do. I'm gonna plug my holes now with my Dixie Bell's Dixie Mud in brown. So I'm just taking one of my tongue depressors and I'm going to fill it and I'm gonna push that mud into that hole so that it fills it. And then I'm going to wipe it off I'll come back later and sand those and probably do another skim coat just for good measure. And that is how I'm going to fill in all those holes. So you'll never even know that there were screws there. Okay, now this piece looks a little bit more complete. It doesn't look as awkward to me. So the next step will be for me to clean this piece really well. I like to use my Dixie Bell's white lightning cleaner. And so obviously I'm wearing gloves. I pour some of my white lightning in some warm water. I use a clean rag and I'm going to just clean the entire piece. It is very important that you go over this. After you're done cleaning it, you go over it again with clean water and a clean rag so you can get all the residual cleaner off of it. Otherwise you will have adhesion issues. I'm gonna be using the new Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint for this in Deep Sea. This is like a deep, deep blue color. It's really beautiful. So this paint right now, it is December, 2020. It's available in the UK, the EU, the in Australia, in New Zealand, and it will be available online for US and Canada at the end of February. So not too much longer. I really like this paint. It does not require a top coat. It is, just a nice smooth satin finish. And so that's what I'm gonna use on this entire thing because I wanted a nice clean finish. I'm not gonna be distressing this. I wanted to have kind of a country, I don't know, boho feel. I wanted some color, but I wanted it to go with the drawer. So I thought that this color would be really pretty. All right, we have a problem. I have a problem that I am going to share with you because I was not paying attention. So I was so concerned with cutting and showing you how to cut and drill that I didn't make sure that it would be small enough for my <laughs> webbing okay so here we go look at this so i live in germany remember i got this on amazon Deutsch with the little gummies and in order for me to be able to finish this project i would have to order more and it will take too long so i also ordered something else all is not lost but look it doesn't fit it's too small so we won't be using cane webbing I'll use that for something else. Um, my friend Katie did use some burlap, jute, whatever you guys want to call it. So I ordered some of this. That came faster. Hold on. I have plenty of this. So that's what we're going to use. Because clearly I, this is what happens when you don't pay attention. Learn from my mistake. So now that I've made that mistake, I'll never make it again. And I hope you learned from my mistake and then you'll never make that mistake. So we're gonna go ahead and, what, I'm gonna put a second coat on here. I've only got one coat. Put a second coat on here. I haven't quite figured out if I want to stain this. I'm going to paint this. I'm not sure if I want to stain this. I don't know, maybe kind of make it brown. We'll see. I'm still like, 
I can't believe I did that. But whatever, we're gonna roll with it because that's what I normally do. We're gonna switch our material. Either way, it's gonna look awesome. So we're gonna put the second coat on and then we'll put this on. So I have my roll of jute. I'm gonna go ahead and unravel it. I'm going to measure it, the inside, and then I'm going to cut it. So I'm just kind of rolling it out to see. I'm gonna overcut it because obviously we don't wanna make the mistake we did last time. So I wanna make sure I have more than I need. I'm going to put it inside the drawer on the inside and I'm going to just keep on measuring it, keep on cutting it and fitting it. And I want it to go over those edges because I will be stapling it. So I wanna have enough fabric that, or enough material that I can actually staple it also to keep it in place. So I do have a pneumatic stapler, but we're gonna be using the eight millimeter staples with my hand staple gun. I'm going to start at one edge to get it kind of started. And then what I'm gonna do is throughout stapling it, I'm gonna kind of pull it so that there is some tension. That way it doesn't droop or anything like that. So that way it's nice and tight and it looks nice and clean and professional. All right, so I am almost done with the, both the drawers and you're gonna see me put them in. We needed to tackle the bottom here. I did not like how light that wood was. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a color wash to stain the bottom of that wood. So Dixie Belle's pine cone is the perfect color for this. To do this color wash, you're gonna need a mixing bowl. You're gonna need a measuring spoon, water, a tongue depressor to mix stuff with, and then I'm using a cheap chip brush. I'm also going to be using shop towels and I'm gonna wear gloves, but I'm gonna pour my pine cone in there. So whatever color you choose, I'm gonna pour my pine cone in there and I'm gonna gradually add water. I want this to almost look like chocolate milk. I mean, this is a brown, so you know, mentally I'm gonna say we want this to look like chocolate milk at this point, but obviously if you use a different color, you use pink or red or whatever, you don't want to think about chocolate milk. So you want this to be liquidy enough that it is going to almost be like the consistency of a stain. What we're doing here is we're actually going to stain this raw wood with this color. I don't have a stain that is this color and I really wanted it to go with it. So I think that we should just do a color wash. So we're what, technically what we're doing is staining our wood with watered down paint. We don't care about them tonight. Once you have your mixture to where you want it, this is so easy. You're just going to basically paint it on. I do sections, that way it doesn't dry too fast. So I'm gonna do sections at a time. I'm gonna put it on there and then I'm gonna take my shop towels or paper towels or whatever you use and I'm gonna wipe it back. So you're gonna see here in a second, it pulls it back and you can see the wood grain. It's just so beautiful. You can make a stain with any color paint that you want.
All right, so here is the piece behind me. It's all done. Thank you so much, Katie, for the awesome tutorial. Obviously, I didn't get to use the cane, but she does use burlap in one of her tutorials. So if this was a custom piece, I would absolutely have waited the time to get the cane so that I could give my customer what they wanted, but it wasn't. So I was able to improvise and do something else. This, I think I like this color, this darker brown, a little bit better with the dark blue anyways. So it all worked out in the end. And actually the video that I put you guys to in Katie's video, she had a little mishap too. So I we didn't plan that. I did not plan this to be like her video, but it is what it is. So I like that we can show you different things and how we fix them. So again, this is a Ikea piece that I found. Actually, I think my found, friend gave it to me. She found it on the side of the road. So trash to treasure, here it is. Trash to treasure Ikea piece. Anyways, if you guys are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit that bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out every week. And also everything I use will be in the description below. You just hit that little see more arrow underneath the title and it will tell you everything that I use and those links, you can click them and it takes you right to where you need to be to purchase them. So again, thank you guys so much and I will see you next week. Happy creating. You guys don't forget to head on over to my friend Katie's channel and here is her dresser with the cane webbing. <laughs>